Please be seated. Right. Uh, welcome, everyone, to this evening's meeting. Welcome to everyone in the public gallery. Good to see you. Uh, first of all, can I take any apologies? There are none, okay. Are there any declarations of interest? Okay, going well so far. Item nine is <coughs> meeting, uh, minutes of the meeting of council held on the 1st of March 2017. Anyone approve that? Yeah, move, okay, thank you. Item 10 is uh, announcements from the Mayor, just very quickly. Uh, I'd just first of all like to thank everyone uh, for today, uh, for all the support I've had uh, from members and from the public. It has been uh, pretty uh, overwhelming, so many thanks for that. Um, we've also received thanks from Rygate School, uh, which is uh, fabulous. They, they came here and they performed during the ceremony and uh, I'd just like to express my thanks for them um, attending and, and doing such a great job. And thanks to Councillor Russell as well for getting that uh, arranged. It, uh, it really is um, a wonderful thing. So thanks to Rygate School for uh, participating in the ceremony. Uh, the third thing is, uh, and this really is a, uh, just, just been given to us, there is a candlelit vigil, vigil sorry that uh, will be taking pay place in the marketplace uh, at seven o'clock this evening. Now, you know, we, we may well be finished by then, we may not, but uh, it's seven till 8.30, obviously to honor those um, who suffered in the, the atrocity uh, in Manchester on Monday. So the uh, pro proposal is that uh, we, we go over to the marketplace and um, you know, place a candle as a mark of our respect. and. Moving on from that, uh, we did a minute silence this morning, but I'd also like to do a minute silence now, if that's okay, to honour those people um, from Monday night. Thank you. Right, item 11 is election of the youth mayor for the coming year. Um, the way I'd like to do this, that's okay, is hopefully approve or, uh, the recommendations at 2.1 to 2.4 in item 11. First of all, if that's okay, I've got anyone who could. Uh, yeah, is that okay? And then, right, Philip, and Kirsty, Philip, where is he? Do you like to speak now, Philip? I think it is without doubt that of all the cities in this country, Derby, through the position of the youth mayor, gives its young people some of the most influence that any city would be give to young people. And over the last two years, serving the 30,000 young people of this city through the role of youth mayor has been the privilege of my life uh, so far. Whether it's been fighting for young people to have affordable transport or 
fighting for the environment that young people live in, uh, are proud to have seen the difference through the position of youth mayor that young people have been able to make in this city. And I would like to thank so many of you uh, in this room, uh, from all the different parties and uh, officials as well, uh, who've worked to ensure that young people's views are expressed in the city, and not just that they are expressed, but that they actually mean something uh, in this city. And I also want to wish our next youth mayor and deputy youth mayor uh, all the best, and I have full confidence that they will do a brilliant job in representing young people over the coming year in this city. Thank you. Thank you, Philip, and thank you, Kirsty, as well, for your, uh, your, your service over the year. It is uh, much appreciated. Uh, I'd also like to thank and commend the, the candidates who stood uh, for this year's Youth Mayor. I mean, I came to one of the um, hustings, and I tell you, they, they were giving some pretty tough questions, um, and they did a really, really good job. And I think quite a few of them are here now, so I'm just going to go and present some awards to them.
Jackson. Just ask if you've identified who would like to come to the front to read their declaration. Yeah. Would the, uh, the youth mayor and the deputy youth mayor like to come forward for the declaration? I know we've just gone back. The youth mayor's already here. Oh, just just here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, can you? Um, I'm going to now do the declaration, and uh, if I just read this out and you repeat, mm -hmm. that's okay. I, Kenya Simbani. I, Kenya Simbani. Having been elected. Having been elected. To become the youth mayor of the city of Derby. To become the youth mayor of the city of Derby. Declare that I. Declare that I. Take that office upon myself. Take that office upon myself. And will duly and faithfully. And will duly and faithfully. Fulfill the duties of it. Fulfill the duties of it. According to the best of my judgment and ability. According to the best of my judgment and ability. I affirm my commitment. I affirm my commitment. To represent the interests of the young people of this city. To represent the interests of the young people of this city. And to act with impartiality and diligence. And to act with impartiality and diligence. To ensure the voices of young people are heard and taken into account. To ensure the voices of young people are heard and taken into account. I undertake to lead by example. I undertake to lead by example. And conduct myself in a manner. And conduct myself in a manner. Which is becoming of the youth mayor of the city. Which is becoming of, of the youth mayor of the city of, of Derby. <laughs> Brilliant. And, uh, <laughs> wonderful. There we go. So, same for Jawaria. I, Jawaria Nadim. I, Jawaria Nadim. Having been elected. Having been elected. To become the Deputy Youth Mayor of the City of Derby. To become the Deputy Youth Mayor of the City of Derby. Declare that I. Declare that I. Take that office upon myself. Take that office upon myself. And will duly and faithfully. And will duly and faithfully. Fulfill the duties of it. Fulfill the duties of it. According to the best of my judgment and ability. According to the best of my judgment and ability. I affirm my commitment. I affirm my commitment to represent the interests of the young people of this city. To represent the interests of the young people of the city. And to act with impartiality and diligence. And to act with impartiality and diligence. To ensure the voices of young people are heard and taken into account. To ensure the voices of young people are heard and taken into account. I undertake to lead by example. I undertake to lead by example. And conduct myself in a manner. I, and conduct myself in a manner which is becoming of the deputy youth mayor of the city of Derby. Which is becoming of the deputy youth mayor of the city of Derby. Fabulous, fabulous. Yeah, just a, also a quick mention of um, Sean Batia, what should I pronounce on the names? Uh, William Morris and Connie Spencer, who couldn't be here, unfortunately. But uh, I think they all did very, very well in the process. And uh, best wishes to them. Hope they have a good year. Right. Moving on. Item 12, announcement by the Leader of the Council on the appointment of Council Cabinet. So that's over to... Councillor Banwait. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There are no changes to uh, cabinet portfolios uh, um, other than to announce that uh, uh, Councillor Amir Raju will be taking over as a uh, cabinet member for leisure, culture, and tourism. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Right, item 13, schedule of meetings. Apparently this has been updated. You should all have the updated version. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Anyone wish to speak on that? The version on your desk is the updated version, apparently. Is there a difference? There's some subtle, there's some subtle Audit and Accounts Committee had different data. Audit and Accounts, primarily, that's changed. They're different. Uh, just to highlight a change in the scrutiny dates, in July um, there's been a straight swap between the dates of Community Scrutiny Board and the Corporate Services Scrutiny Review Board um, from the 10th to the 24th for Corporate Services. Okay, someone wishing to move that? Yeah, yeah. okay. Right, item 14, uh, constitutional appointments. Okay. There's four... Members of Council, again this document has been updated and uh, recirculated to you, so you should have the updated copy before you. There are votes required, however, before the entirety of the document can be agreed, and the votes, um, that require, votes are required for the Vice Chair of Regeneration and Housing Board, the votes between Councillors Grimmadell and Nater, the Vice Chair of Communities Board, votes between Councillor Skelton and Councillor Smale. Vice Chair of Planning Control, Councillor West and Councillor Wood, and the Vice Chair of Audit and Accounts Committee, which is Councillor Ashburn and Councillor Rolston. Um, Mr Mayor. Okay, so the first of those uh, votes we'll, we'll do straight away. For, for Vice Chair of Regeneration and Housing Board, uh, those in favour of Councillor Grimmadell. Thank you. <laughs> okay. uh, those in favour of Councillor Nater? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so Councillor Grimmadell is the Vice Chair of Regeneration and Housing Board. Uh, the vote for the Vice Chair of Communities Board. Uh, those wishing to support Councillor Skelton? Okay, thank you. And those in favour of Councillor Smale? Okay, so Councillor Smale is the Vice Chair of Communities Board. Uh, Vice Chair of Planning Control. This is between Councillor West and Councillor Wood. Um, those wishing to support Councillor West. Um, yes, okay, I'll vote for Councillor West. Um, and those voting for Councillor Wood. Okay, that's Councillor West then, uh, as Vice Chair of Planning Control. And the final one there is Vice Chair of Audit and Accounts. This is between Councillors Ashburner and Rolston. So those in favour of Councillor Ashburner. Okay, thank you. And those in favour of Councillor Rolston. Right, thank you. Councillor Rolston is uh, the Vice Chair of Audit and Accounts. Right, I think we might have another chair. Oh, Councillor Hazelgrave. Uh, Mr Mayor, just uh, as a point of information, uh, I'd like to propose that Councillor Linda Winter, our outgoing Mayor, joins the uh, Labour contingency on audit and accounts to fill that vacancy. Oh, thank you.
So, can we now accept the constitutional appointments with all those votes completed? Yeah? Move? Thank you. Right, excellent. Um, Mr Mayor, there is an additional item for consideration this evening and this relates to the constitutional appointments for the Police and Crime Panel. This is item 14A. Uh, Councillor Dinser. Um, Mr Mayor, the um, lead authority for the Police and Crime Panel is Derbyshire County Council and there is a statutory requirement that one place is offered to Derby City Council um, in order to comply with the regulations that govern this panel. The appointment to the panel is ratified by the Police and Crime Panel at their meeting on the 13th of July. Um, there are um, some issues which have been raised uh, by a, a number of members um, here today regarding the proportionality and the allocation of seats to this panel given the, the size of the city in comparison to the um, county. So therefore the report has been prepared with the recommendations of 2.1 and 2.2 for consideration this evening. Mr Mayor, if I may, uh, with your and George, I'd like to uh, um, propose an amendment, which I think the officers have got details of. Yeah. We're still going to get the... Uh... Yeah, Um, Mr Mayor, for the sake of clarity and to assist Councillor Poulter, um, the amendment um, which is to the recommendations in the report is uh, Councillor Poulter is proposing that I move the motion be amended by the addition of the following words. Subject to officers commencing negotiations with their counterparts in other authorities to seek to establish a principle that Derby, as an area with a quarter of the population of Derby and Derbyshire, should have four seats on a panel of 16, or at least a quarter of any future overall number that may be established. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'll try and be brief. Um, the Police and Crime Panel has and will continue to perform an extremely important role in the monitoring and, and scrutiny of police and crime uh, within, the, within the county. Um, current arrangements, as has been pointed out, are that uh, one member of each authority, um, council authority within the, within the county, get one automatic place on the, on the panel. It was when we came to sit and look at constitutional appointments um, that, um, and considered the recent changes in, um, in the county it prompted us to look at this and consider that, as has been pointed out and as the amendment points out, the city ha actually contains over a quarter of the population of the county. Um, and and on, a, on, a, on an even level of a, a disproportionate amount of crime uh, throughout the county. And so we feel that the, count, that the city is seriously under, under um, represented in the city. Uh, on, on this panel and, and what the amendment calls for really is for the officers who we've done some work with and created some figures and I thank David Walsh for that to which we can go to the county with and discuss this and hopefully um, and I appreciate in the past that um, 
There are some co-opted members that go onto this panel, and I understand that the Labour group in previous years have negotiated greater, greater representation for the city um, by way of those co-opted members. But in my view, that should be a formal arrangement that the city is better represented on this panel. And this amendment si simply calls on the officers to begin those negotiations with the county, and we can come to some arrangement and conclusion prior to the um, Police and Crime Panel's first meeting. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Bolton. Do you have a seconder for the amendment? Yes, Do you wish to speak? Can we, and therefore, t anyone else wish to speak? Do you want to vote on the uh, amendment then? All those in favour of the amendment? Uh, well, any against? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. It's obviously my influence. Uh, thank you very much. That's um, unanimous. Um, for the sake of clarity, just to confirm that the report is, as amend, is now these recommendations as amended. Still receiving. Yeah, you tell them. Yeah. You tell them. Still receiving nomination for the report. What do we need to? Don't have to. No. Are you putting your nomination forward for the one? Yeah, you are. Um, Mr Mayor, just for the sake of clarity, the unanimous support of the amendment means that the recommendations contained within item 14A, which are 2.1 and 2.2, will be um, approved as amended. I, d I don't think there's any need to ask you all to vote again if that's acceptable for you, Mr Mayor, given that we've had such a unanimous vote. Um, there is still, however, the issue of uh, the nomination for the statutory one um, seat that we have on the panel. Um, I don't know if Councillor Shanker wishes to assist. Yeah, Councillor Shanker. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, so I agree with what Councillor Poulter says and the, the, the reasoning behind uh, proposing this amendment, but our nomination is Councillor Paul Pegg, who will take that position on the panel for now, and if our officers are successful in negotiation, negotiating additional places, we'll make the uh, nominations at that time. Okay, item 15 is appointments to neighbourhood boards. And that's been updated. Yeah, exactly. This has also been updated and circulated. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, on the um, neighbourhood board chairs, there are two wards that are contested, and we're going to do votes on those first. Councillor Evans. Mr Mayor, uh, I'd like to propose Councillor Graves to chair of the Olveston board, please. Is that one of the ones that's contested? Do you have a second, Councillor Gray? Okay, there are three wards that require a, um, a vote. Okay, and we'll do those three. So first of all, uh, we'll, we'll go alphabetically, and uh, obviously Alverston now comes first. So um, this will be between Councillor Bayliss and Councillor Graves. So all those in favour of Councillor Bayliss. Okay, thank you. All those in favour of Councillor Graves? Okay, so Councillor Bayliss will be the chair of Olverston. Next, we've got uh, Blake Greaves. This is a contest um, between, uh, between uh, Councillor Radu and Councillor Skelton. So, 
Can I have, uh, can I have uh, votes for Councillor Raju, first of all, please? Okay, and votes for Councillor Skelton. Okay, so uh, that will be Councillor Raju, Chair of the Blagreaves Board, and finally Derwent, where there is a contest between Councillor Rawson and Councillor Hudson. So can I have uh, votes for Councillor Rawson, please, first of all? I'm voting. Yeah, and thank you. And count, uh, votes for Councillor Hudson, please. Okay, okay. So that's Councillor Rawson um, elected there. So, uh, Councillor Shanker. Thank you, Chair. Can we just propose a change for the Chair of the Symphony Neighbourhood Board, please? Uh, Councillor West instead of myself. Certainly, yeah. Is that seconded? Thank you. Mr Mayor, for the sake of clarity, I will now confirm with the chairs of each ward. So for Abbey Ward, the chair will be Councillor Heselgrave. For Alistair, Councillor Webb. Alveston, Councillor Bayliss. Arboretum, Councillor Shiraz Khan. Blaygreaves, Councillor Raju. Bolton, Councillor Banwait. Chaddesden, Councillor Bolton. Chelliston, Councillor Ingle. Darley, Councillor Eldret. Derwent, Councillor Rawson. Littleover, Councillor Kerr. Mackworth, Councillor Whitby. Mickleover, Councillor Alison Holmes. Normanton, Councillor Sandu. Oakwood, Councillor Barker. Sinfin, Councillor West. Spondon, Councillor Poulter. Councillor Kerr. Oh, oh, um, thank you, Mr Mayor, and congratulations. It's lovely to have a fresh face. Every year we get a fresh face. It's excellent. The, I was just going to ask, in terms of neighbourhood boards, those wards where we have very little in terms of support for neighbourhood boards, uh, I just thought there might be a need to review in due course the role of the neighbourhood board chair and whether that is something that could be done during the coming, coming municipal year, so that by this time next year we have a clearer picture as to what roles are for people who haven't got any officer support. We shall note that. Thank you, Kirsten. Yeah, does everyone accept the appointments as... Okay, thank you. Item 16 is appointments to outside bodies and charities. Councillor Skelton, we think, has an amendment, but obviously we need some votes. And so, so, some contests. Yeah, OK. There are, again, um, some contests here relating to Derbyshire Hospital's NHS Foundation Trust and um, appointment to East Midlands Reserve Forces and Cadets Association. So there's three, three contests. Mr Barker. Yes, Mr Mayor, if I may, just before we go into the elections, uh, there is an error on the National Association of British Market Authorities. I would like to propose and add to it Councillor Linda Winter, please, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Seconded. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, Councillor Hasgrave. Chair, I'm aware that uh, it does, there is an annual kind of subscription fee for each councillor, and I would be happy to take myself off that to save the council some expense. And I may come back on maybe if council wishes later. Okay, thank you. Councillor Skelton. Councillor Skelton. Thank you, Mr Mayor, and congratulations on your election earlier today. Um, the English Churches Housing Group, um, it should be Councillor Kerr, not myself down there. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Right, okay, we'll move to the, uh, the three votes. Now, the first one is appointment to Derbyshire Hospital's NHS Foundation Trust, and this is between Councillors Froggart and Councillor Potter. So, can we have uh, votes for Councillor Froggart first, please? I'll support that. Yeah. 
And Councillor Potter. Okay, so it's yep, so that's Councillor Froggart. Uh, next, we've got Derbyshire Healthcare NHS Foundation Trust. This is between Councillors Potter and Councillor Turner. So, uh, those in favour of Councillor Potter, first of all. And Councillor Turner. Okay, thank you very much. That's, uh, that's Councillor Turner then. And the final one is the appointment to East Midlands Reserve Forces and Cadets Association. This is between Councillors Pegg and Councillor Smale. So those in favour of Councillor Pegg. And uh, those in favour of Councillor Smale. That's uh, Councillor Pegg. Subject to all the amendments and the votes, uh, can we accept the document? Okay, subject to all the uh, votes and everything, can we accept the document, please? Oh, sorry, uh, Councillor Rawson. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr Mayor, and congratulations on your, your appointment. Um, there's a vacancy for Osmiston Regeneration Partnership. And as cabinet member for regeneration, I'm happy to take up that post, uh, Chair, if that's agreeable to full council. Okay, thank you. So, are we happy to accept the document? Yeah. yeah okay. Right. Excellent. Thank you. Item seven is attendances at annual conferences. Yeah. Previous print. Thank you. Yeah. No, no debate on that? Okay. Just saying, I can speak if you want, okay. but it's just the report. Do you yeah. accept the report? Uh, item 18 is pay policy statement 2017 to 18. Uh, anyone wishing to speak on this or accept it? Yeah. So, leader moving it, yeah? Okay. Yeah, move. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Right, Councillor, uh, Councillor, uh, motion. Um, item 19, consider the following motion, a notice of motion. Uh, we've got Councillor Bayliss to propose this. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, we saw this week events where the police got it right, sadly, in terms of the, their response to the atrocity in Manchester. But in the past, they've got it wrong. Uh, and Orgreave is one of their places in the past where they've got it wrong. The so-called Battle of Orgreave was a, a violent confrontation between police and picketers at the British Steel Corporation coking plant in South Yorkshire, which took place on the 18th of June, 1984. Around 5,000 picketers were faced by approximately 6,000 police officers from 18 di different forces, equipped with right gear and supported by dogs and 42 mounted officers. Picketers had attempted to prevent access to the plant by strike-breaking lorries. Unlike previous protests, where protesters were simply turned away, the police carrelled the miners into a nearby field and prepared for a confrontation. Subsequent accounts have suggested that the authorities wanted to defeat the picketers and teach the miners a lesson. When the first lorries arrived, the picketers surged forward and a mounted charge by police was ordered against them. A small number of miners responded by throwing stones and other missiles. Two further police advances followed, which included officers on foot beating unarmed miners with batons, inflicting serious injuries on many. After several hours, with many picketers having left, the police launched further mounted charges pursuing the remaining miners through the streets of Orgreave itself. Following the event, 71 picketers were charged with the riot and 24 with violent disorder, which at the time carried significant prison sentences. Police statements contained dozens of identical descriptions of a riot and the duplication of evidence against individual miners. The trials collapsed when evidence presented by the police was deemed unreliable in court. In June 1991, South Yorkshire Police paid £425,000 in compensation to 39 miners for, for assault, a wrongful arrest, unlawful detention and malicious prosecution. In 2015, the IPCC reported 
evidence of excessive violence by police officers, a false narrative from police exaggeration of violence by minors, perjury by officers giving evidence to prosecute arrested men, and apparent cover-up of that perjury by senior officers. In October 2016, the Home Secretary announced that there would be no statutory inquiry or independent review into the events of Orgreave, and I think that is a fundamental mistake. After almost 33 years, victims deserve a public inquiry. Many have had their lives and their injuries, the emotional scars of the day and aspirations cast against them for some time. The tactics employed by the government and senior police officers divided communities and even families, pitting working class police officers and miners against each other, which we see today in communities across the old areas where we had pits. Together with other scandals from that period, public confidence in the police was substantially damaged and as a result these events, particularly in working class communities, need to be investigated. And I think, from a balanced point of view, both, both sides, both what the police did and also what the miners did. Orgreave has been described as part of a systematic and um, political motivated attempt by the government to undermine the power of trade unions and pay the way for privatisation. I think we need to explore that as, on face value. There are similarities between Hillsborough, where falsified evidence, manipulated states and smearing of victims and the same commanding officers from South Yorkshire Police were involved. All grief showed the police being used as an instrument of the state rather than means for upholding law and order. And as I said, we need to look at it from both sides. My involvement in this is one of the things that back in 1984, I was a student in uh, Nottingham and myself and my fellow students were often stopped at random by police officers to ask us who we were as if we were flying pickets and I've been searched many a time. And I think for the justice of our communities, we need to be open about this and do it in a way that we look at both sides of the equation, both what the NUN said and did, and also what the government said and did, and also what police officers did, to make sure that we've thoroughly learned the events of that time and make sure they aren't repeated today. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bayliss. Uh, Councillor Anderson, you're going to second the motion? Do I have to say? <laughs> I reserve my right to use my microphone correctly and then speak. Councillor <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hazelgrave. Mr Mayor, uh, I'm actually from a West Yorkshire mining family. In fact, I was the only male member of the family that wasn't connected with mining when they got to working age. Uh, I actually was the first one to go to university. And um, I came down to Derby in 1977 and my brothers were both out for a year during that time of the strike. There was very little strike pay met, uh, given and one of my brothers had two young children at the time. I can assure you that uh, the scars left by what happened at Orgreave are going to be very, very hard to heal. And the only way you can heal this kind of thing when there's been such conflict and a clear distortion of the truth in my opinion um, is by some kind of public inquiry and an attempt to get the truth and also a recognition that sometimes the police do get things wrong and when they do, when they own up and say that, they start building relationships so that they become police, community police officers. Our police go, uh, are in office and work through consent. That's always been our principle. It's not like the French police where they're all hated, they're all armed, everyone despises them and there's no real link between the community and the police, or the gendarmerie, or whatever you want to call it. But here in Britain, it's really important for social cohesion that we actually have and sustain that process that we've had by public consent that the police work with us in the interests of everyone. And for that reason, I support this motion. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Dinser, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As a police and crime commissioner, I was one of 16 police and crime commissioners who wrote to the Home Secretary to uh, really recognise the injustice done to the Orgreave miners and, um, and do it in the same way that for Hillsborough there was acknowledgement and there was um, um, 
moving on in terms of accepting the grievance done to the Hillsborough instant um, um, individuals. It's clear that the lawyer solicitors and the advisors for both Hillsborough and Orgreave were the same, and the Truth and Justice Campaign Group quite rightly want resolution for the minors who were wrongly accused and it's been quite clearly accepted. And I think that is a real compulsion for the Home Secretary to review her decision not to allow the Truth and um, Justice campaign group's requests for um, an insight into what went wrong. Now, I know professionally police forces across the country have improved and learned from the past, but that does not allow for those minors to be able to put their name um, in a proper place and actually get justice for what's happened. So I really support this motion and I implore on all councillors in this chamber to support this resolution because truth and reconciliation can help everybody. It can help the minors, it can help those people who were uh, involved in the uh, activities which were unlawful and wrong. And I think it will be better for society if that actually happened. And it's wrong, I think, for the Home Secretary have not to have considered this request from the Truth and Justice Campaign Group. And I sort of really ask for people to dig into their consciences and say, is something worth supporting today? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Graves. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I can say that uh, I welcome this motion, and I'm really pleased that my fellow councillor, Councillor Bayliss, has presented this, proposed this this evening. It is the exact motion that I was going to propose uh, a couple of meetings ago. Um, however, I had to withdraw it um, because of the Orgreave uh, Campaign Committee. Um, who didn't like the fact it was a UKIP councillor proposing it into a local council. Um, I fully support the aims of this motion. Uh, I think it's disgraceful how the police treated minors. Uh, I have a mining background in that my family were all minors on my father's side, and so I have an affinity with minors that are treated poorly, um, and these minors certainly were treated poorly. But we must also remember it's not just the minors, it's their families. Their families suffered a great deal uh, at, this, at their expense. Uh, and I think it's appalling how they have been treated and how the police have dealt with this. And, and I fully support this motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Anderson, do you want to speak now? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I want to start by um, really expressing gratitude to the wonderful public service, uh, wonderful public servants who choose a, a career in the modern police force. We are incredibly lucky that we have police forces in this country that are able to learn lessons from past mistakes. That work with communities from every ethnic, religious and racial background and that work hard every hour of the day so that people in Derby can sleep soundly in their beds at night. Now, in the wake of the horrendous atrocities that we saw in Manchester this week and Westminster just a few months ago, it is absolutely clear that our police force are on the front line protecting us against very real threats and very real harm. And that's why, Mr Mayor, I'm not talking about the modern police force tonight. I'm talking about creating an opportunity for learning. Historical inquiries into the conduct of police have created positive outcomes all over the country. From the McPherson report, which highlighted institutional racism in the Metropolitan Police in the wake of the tragic murder of Stephen Lawrence by National Front bigots, to the inquiry into the Hillsborough disaster, which was clear on the failings of South Yorkshire Police, which led to the tragic deaths of 96 people who just wanted to go and watch a football match. Investigating the police actions at Orgreaves presents an opportunity. It gives lawmakers a chance to scrutinise failings, to inspect with a fine-tooth comb the pressures which led to the words of the IPCC, evidence of excessive violence by police officers, 
a false narrative exaggerating violence by minors, perjury by officers giving evidence to prosecute arrested men, and an apparent cover-up of that perjury by senior police officers. The minors and police present that day deserve the truth to come out. Was political pressure from Westminster to blame? Were police officers used by Thatcher's government as a tool to suppress legitimate protest? How do we ensure this never happens again? All of these answers can easily be found by simply holding an independent review. I know that pragmatism from all sides of the political divide can often be found wanting in this chamber, but ultimately, all of us agree that scrutiny is good. All of us agree that our police officers deserve to work in an environment where they cannot be accused of refusing to learn lessons from the past. Most of us, and most of all, we all believe that the freedom to dissent against a political decision is absolutely right and just. Now imagine if, as a council, we simply abolish scrutiny. When I think about the fantastic work done last year in IYP committee with councillors Smale, Ralston, Williams, Kerr, Nawaz, Hazelgrave, Whitby and myself, I'm very proud to be part of something that takes the issue of accountability seriously. And this is a matter of accountability, Mr Mayor. Someone was to blame for the police tactics that day in Orgreave, and I'm absolutely sick of that blame being placed simply on the shoulders of working class police officers who were present. Someone sat in an office and gave orders, and we want to know who. We are very lucky here in the UK, Mr Mayor. We don't have a trigger-happy police force like they do in the States. And, as an Afro-Caribbean man here in Britain, I know that police institutional racism is being fought from inside the police force, and I'm proud of them for that. I'm proud of Derbyshire Police, and I can categorically say that, knowing the safety of my family, friends and colleagues in this council is in the hands of committed, passionate and hard-working men and women, and that makes me so proud, Mr Mayor. I'm sure all members in this room will also join me in expressing our gratitude for all of our emergency services and their families who, the families do sit at home praying that they get back in one piece, particularly, Mr Mayor, in such a difficult time. So I ask members to please vote for this motion and vote for justice. Thank you. Uh Councillor Bayliss, do you wish to sum up? Given we've got pressing matters this evening, no, Mr Mayor, move to the vote. Thank you. So, uh, all those in favour of the motion? Okay. Yep. Any against? Well done, all the veterans. I'm proud of every one of you, and okay. thank you. Because I stood there and I will be by them. And here's the proof, all the veterans. Thank you all, ever so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the motion is carried, and uh, hopefully we can all go to the marketplace now to pay our respects. Thank you.